Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for another very, very riveting topic coming uh, in store for all of you. In fact, we have aptly titled it the Fireside Chat also because of the kind of topic it is. And let me quickly bring on board our set of speakers joining us uh, this afternoon. We, in fact, have with us uh, Amit Kapoor, Joint Managing Partner, J. Sagar Associates, Suraj Muraje, Managing Director and Group CEO, Quest Corp Limited, and Ashwin Yardi, CEO, India Cap Gemini. So on that note, we're going to actually gather some insights on blending sustainability and business transformation uh, featuring our next uh, set of speakers and uh, Mr. Amit will be spearheading this conversation for all of you and with that let the session begin. Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to uh, the Firestride Chat. The topic is obviously of relevance and importance today with the recent report, which tells us how severe and significant the challenges that we face are. Uh, given that sustainability and a business must go hand in hand, particularly for countries like ourselves, we have fortunately a very, very experienced panel which works on business transformation, combining technology, talent, and viability. Uh, both uh, Ashwin and Suraj bring in a wealth of experience over the years having worked on this field. And I would be looking forward to trying to see how we could leverage their understanding of transforming businesses to bring climate consciousness into the overall functioning and day-to-day -day lives of enterprises and people around. But for a moment before we set the stage, do consider seven or maybe six of the SDG goals, which speak directly to ESG for the corporate world. And these would be industry, innovation and infrastructure, the goal number nine, responsible consumption and production, goal number 12, affordable and clean energy, goal number seven, clean water sanitation, goal number six, climate action, peace, justice and strong institutions and partnerships for the goals. Now, given these, I would love to invite Ashwin to share his insights of how he has seen things transform in his area to try and marry the apparently conflicting approaches of economic growth with sustainability. Over to you, Ashwin. So thanks, uh, Amit. Uh, so uh, as you introduced, uh, today we've seen sustainability to be an extremely critical topic uh, and it it's, it's, it's a boardroom discussion uh, across across the world. Uh, just to set the context and give some introduction, uh, you know, as, as a responsible organization, uh, we at Capgemini have made a commitment uh, to be carbon net neutral uh, by 2025 and then carbon net zero uh, by 2030. Uh, what we also taken upon as an ambition is uh, being in technology organization. Uh, we have uh, also committed that we will help our clients uh, save uh, 10 million tons of carbon footprint by 2030. Uh, so we bring technology expertise uh, to help our clients uh, achieve these objectives. But what has also been my experience is uh, some of the actions uh, which we ourselves have launched uh, uh, are a lot of times very simple and actually help us drive a lot more uh, engagement uh, with our employees and society. Just wanted to share a couple of things, you know, uh, uh, for, for us, large part uh, of our own, own consumption, uh, of course, in addition to the data footprint or the footprint with data centers is due to travel. Uh, and globally, uh, we also have a 
a plan for our employees where we fund the, uh, the, the car and vehicles. And we have now moved to a model where uh, all our cars, uh, which is almost uh, 12,000 car fleet, would mute, move to electric. Uh, we, we are doing it globally. We have started to do it also in India. Uh, the second other thing which I wanted to uh, share is something we did in India around uh, a very simple initiative, but quite engaging. Uh, we launched last year something called as Mission Million Trees. Uh, the idea was, uh, and we launched it just before uh, COVID, the idea was to plant a million trees. Uh, uh, and what was interesting is progressively, we also started uh, communicating and tying this initiative with our employees' key uh, milestones. So somebody completes uh, five years in Capgemini, we plan five years for them. Uh, somebody completes 10 years, we plan 10 years for them. And it has created a tremendous movement internally. Uh, uh, very small, it's, it's a simple action, uh, but that uh, that shows that there is a lot of awareness of uh, sustainability even at a grassroots level, and people want to participate in it. And just wanted to share that, you know, just last week our global CEO announced uh, that we will expand this million trees to 20 million trees around the world by 2030. Uh, so again, uh, uh, I believe it, it's something which is very important topic for all of us in boardroom. Uh, there are enough statistics which show uh, the companies which have shown uh, focus on this uh, topic of sustainability have had, uh, you know, uh, better stock market performance. I think one of the Harvard studies said 47% better performance and almost 60% better ROA. Uh, so important topic. And what I see is helps a lot with employees and also financial performance. Thank you. Thanks. Suraj, how do you see this? Because Quest being uh, the largest employer in the private sector in India with workforce where you take pride in the fact that you're empowering your workforce with uh, digital skills and our ability to leverage uh, working in a more efficient and smart manner. The obvious uh, mindset is that the moment you bring technology to bear, you lose jobs and it impacts em employment. In a country like ours, where we need to get employment going, challenges of making sure that development and particularly the SDG 8, decent work with economic growth, does not get sacrificed on the onwell of uh, the march towards uh, clean technology and climate action. That's the balancing act, which, is, which always is a conundrum. So do share some insights of how you have approached it and how do you see it and how does it impact the workforce and the overall sentiment around it? Great, uh, great question, Amit. Um, yeah. Look, I, I think that, um, you know, we've reflected quite hard on the overall SDG, how it links to our ESG commitment and how we think as, a, as an Indian company really uh, about, about how, we, how we think about our ESG commitments. And I, I must confess, it's a little bit confusing today because there's so much hype and there's so many people trying to measure companies in so many ways. I think at the end we said, look, you know, this is all fine. Let's just do what we think is congruent to us, our business and where we can make a difference. And what we were struck by is if you take the 17 SDGs, the first 10 really are about achieving table stakes, which most of maybe the Western world has achieved. But in India, no poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, quality education, all of these things really do come from having stable jobs. Um, you know, we've, we've tried, so I mean, to, to answer your question about technology and how that impacts a number of jobs, I think India is fortunate. And I say this in a very, maybe in a sarcastic way, we're fortunate in that our, our the low end of our labor pyramid is probably the least unproductive in the world. I've lived in, I've, and worked in Africa, I've even worked in Southeast Asia and in Europe. India is, I think, the only country left in the world where Malis will trim the lawn with hedge clippers because we couldn't be bothered buying them lawnmowers. Um, you know, we've not thought about how we technology enable. And the reality is that what the data around the world shows is that as productivity goes up, incomes also go up and security goes up. And frankly, uh, 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 just the uh, pride in, in work goes up. Uh, so I think that technology is a good thing for India. I think that the level of 
you know the our economy is in a low enough base you know if you if you take the impact of let's say automation versus growth uh, we probably still have 10% of the commercial space we will need in 10 years so yes it will probably get twice as productive you'll need half the number of people per square feet but the overall demand is still going to go up and the fact is we don't have enough skilled labor in india today if we want to hire sales people in the field we it's, and that is one of the most professions to hire people for because we just don't have enough skilled people uh, or machine workers who can work with high end machines so what i mean the the way we defined our uh, how we contribute towards sdgs so obviously the the table stakes is around just using resources better as a company ourselves so be it uh, you know re- reducing uh, plastic footprint or paper waste disposal uh, e waste disposal uh, reducing our uh, energy footprint we're, we're doing all of that but i think in addition where we felt we can make a real difference is to reach out to segments that today are maybe not necessarily covered uh, or easily ac- don't have easy access to work to see how we bring them in so last year for example about uh, a quarter of the people we hired were from outside tier 1 and tier 2 cities uh, 30% approximately got access to social security benefits for the first time in their lives what we're trying to do is to create more digital assets so we can go beyond the limits of physical reach to allow people to apply to allow people to credentialize to allow people to differentiate so they get access to these jobs and i think that is where we as a company can make the most amount of difference obviously i think everything that you and ashwin talk about in terms of energy footprint is absolutely important as a global citizen for us to think about these things because these are you know by definition if we don't have air to breathe we will all die it doesn't matter no one's going to have a job but in the context of india also given our business model i think it's important to think about where we can make a disproportionate difference oh, wonderful wonderful i think i think it's uh, enthusing to know that you're finding the ability to bring in uh, many more uh, youth who are not necessarily able to access the employment opportunities as normally would have happened in tier 1 and tier 2 and get them in the fold because that will be the transformation if you are able to actually get the tier 3 and the semi rural segments in and and empower them digitally without the language barrier coming in the way you would have done your own service because that's when i think uh, india will see the transformation where we'll be able to leverage our demographic dividend because our problem has been as you said the skilled workforce and and that brings me back to what cap gemini has been doing i think i think the entire effort on the business transformation from the production cycle side from the side of optimizing resources it, it doesn't necessarily always mean contrary to the mindset of people that you are going to actually cut people out it means that you use use the resources more effectively produce better and are able to spread the opportunities because you are able to generate capital back into play so uh, ashwin uh, it'd be interesting to see how you have approached that and what are your insights going forward because always uh, one of the big issues that the naysayers on this whole climate transformation and climate action uh, and the climate consciousness if i may say so that battle to get that into our thinking okay. has been that this is going to lo- lead to loss of employment uh, rich will get a, a get much richer and people get marginalized how are we dealing with that challenge uh, as cap gemini see so uh, uh, amit you know lot of our statistics and we did a uh, recently a big study uh, in europe uh, with some of our uh, you know european partners and what we did is we defined actually 55 technologies which would help uh, drive sustainability uh, you know across next you know 20 to 25 years Uh, in the process of that study what uh, was observed is uh, actually there is much more economic dividend with uh, sustainability investments uh, it will generate significant amount of uh, jobs uh, employment and you know you look at different statistics uh, most of them uh, indicate a significant higher positive impact on gdp 
so uh, you know we do believe uh, that uh, actually you know uh, sus- focus on sustainability would definitely be net positive on gdp uh, and on people and on employment and what we've done is really you know if i look at the you know the manufacturing side of story you know we call it the six r's uh, so first is reduce so of course look at how we can reduce wastage in the every, every life cycle part of the life cycle then it's reuse a lot about uh, reusing components uh, then the recycling uh, recovering uh, you know there are companies which are using technology uh, and uh, a huge amount of ai to ensure they recover a lot of uh, products uh, or partly used uh, elements in their production life cycle and then look at redesigning and uh, remanufacturing uh, one interesting example i just would like to share on remanufacture you know uh, one of the auto companies uh, is now actually getting back its uh, engines uh and uh, you know doing all the testing around the current state of them uh refining them uh, reshaping them and then selling them as uh, refurbished engines and you we all know important engine is part of an automotive uh, components uh, but this is a very good example of how uh, you know the company is using uh, ai they're using imagery to capture the details of uh, the, the parts and the wear and wear and tear of the machine uh, and then sort of refurbishing it uh, so again uh, what i feel is uh, if there is commitment and that's how we do it with our clients we do a three phased approach first we commit uh, you know so we ask the companies to come up with their own strategy uh, set up strong goals the second part of it uh, then uh, is to set up uh, what we call as a act uh, so set up clear actions uh, either on sustainable product services uh, operations or even sustainable it you know it in itself uh, ha- is prone to being uh, you know uh, not friendly to uh, uh, environment uh but take specific actions use technology use ai and then lastly once you plan the actions use data and uh, reporting to monitor your life cycle so if if you ask me you know with the six with the three phased approach uh, we see there is a clear way that technology can actually help companies organizations achieve their objectives uh and all the statistics research indicates it's actually positive for employment and uh, also for uh, gdp excellent i think i think that's that's seminal and i think it's very encouraging to know that you have seen and identified those 50 technologies because that uh, actually is a war chest by which you could completely unleash the transformation we are talking about suraj brings me back to you and i think i think if you pick it up from there and you empower your guys i think you got a joint venture going there are those 50 technologies and now you need the guys to work the 50 technologies into the economy and build growth out i think we are finding answers to address the sdgs right here so what do you think i know i think that's absolutely right i think look history has borne out that um, every technology displaces some people but at the end of the day it results in higher productivity and therefore to benefit you know it's it's good for mankind i think any improvements in general are good and uh, uh i you know i think our our experience in india is you bring in a technology a good technology and i'm sure i'd love to see the list of 50 ashwin uh, okay. but you know you bring in a good technology you'll displace 20 30% of your workforce but the reality is the demand for growth is just i mean the the growth in the underlying economy is so high these people do get absorbed because the businesses are growing 10 15% year on year i think the real challenge for us uh, amit is how do we skill people quickly enough to use these new technologies yeah. um, and it's not just about you know our learning is not just about like teaching the person at the front line to use a vacuum cleaner better that's the easier solution the more difficult change is how do you get the middle manager to understand that it's better for the person to use this technology how do you get the middle manager to be curious about 
what changes can happen, how things can be done better. This whole Japanese notion of continuous improvement and Kaizen, you know, how do you bring that into every person? That's what we need today. I think the need to learn has become so and so endemic today. Every, you know, every manager needs to spend a day or two a month learning about technology, what new technologies are coming, how I can, how I can build them into the way I work. Yeah. So I think uh, from what I hear, and, and, and I think it's, it's resonating beautifully, it is evident that there is an opportunity to try and unravel and unleash this by one change in our workspace, by making it count and in the evaluation on an annual basis as to which managers and which officials and employees are genuinely working towards reinventing, imbibing change. Because unless you put that value on the table, it is very convenient to say, not in my backyard. And let the others make the change. I'm happy where I am because I'm quite comfortable. But uh, thank you so much for those insights. Now, it brings me to a very interesting question posed from the floor. And uh, please, both of you respond to it. I think it's, it's wonderfully set for what we have talked right now. What do you feel are the key strategies that the leaders should follow? to adopt SDGs to work towards the path of sustainable businesses. Given that both of you have already given very good insights, uh, which I think is, is emerging into an action plan. And I won't be surprised it, at the back of this, the two of you will sit together and do a joint venture and get going. <laughs> but, but here you are. How do you take it forward? So uh, I, I'll take a shot at it, Suraj, first. You know, so I think the first and most important thing which we all, uh, especially at a leadership level, have to do is uh, commit uh, to the to the goal. Uh, and based on the role or the business you are in, you could have different ways of committing to the goal. Uh, because people look at what their leaders do. Huh? And for us, you know, one of the things we did, as, as I mentioned, uh, for us, the biggest uh, energy uh, or, or impact on carbon is our international travel. Uh, and we publish uh, widely the carbon footprint each of us is doing when we are traveling internationally. Uh, and have set a clear goal that each one of us uh, would reduce our own footprint by 50%. Uh, and 50% compared to 2019, you know, so of course, that's when we had a lot of uh, travel. Last two years have been slightly different reference. So, uh, and then of course, uh, how do you make it happen? So then to far more uh, uh, virtual calls, virtual meetings, uh, we, we have been doing, we have a ritual of doing global kickoffs and global events. Uh, and several of them have been done now virtually. Uh, so again, I would say a lot of it is very simple. Uh, first, show your commitment. Uh, put very simple but measurable goals which are visible to your employees. Uh, and that itself st starts the change management and the movement. There are many more other you know, complex things you could do, but doing some of these simple things really helps you drive much more change management. Excellent. How about you? So I would, I mean, I, I just obviously agree with everything Ashwin said. I, I think it starts with conviction. Uh, and I think, I, I think that's been at the core of our internal ESG conversations as well. Uh, I think you need to be convinced that what you're doing is good for your business, for society. Um, and you've got to believe that it's important. And I think uh, in today's day and age, I go back to, I think one needs to avoid the temptation to greenwash yes. uh, because you've got to report, let me just say something. Uh, I don't, I think each of us needs to understand we will never make everybody happy. Uh, there'll always be, this topic is so vast and different people with great con conviction and the best of intentions come at this from such different directions. You will never make everybody happy and you should not try I think what you should try is to find where you can make a difference and what you can do. And then, and then I think all the standard corporate systems around it, set targets, review, review performance, all that stuff, I think, comes naturally to us. I think this is just a, this is just a new variable in our, in our objective function that we just got to think through. Yes. Well, thank you very much. I think it's been a very insightful discussion. I uh, completely agree with both of you. I think it's all about imbibing climate consciousness and then living it. It's not about papering over it, as you rightly said, grain washing. And demonstrably, if the leadership doesn't follow, there is no way that you can expect the rank and file to believe in it. 
because they will always feel that they've been given the short shift to fulfill the goals which the seniors wanted and uh, and that's pretty much it you have we have to lead by example we have to embrace the change which is upon us and transform ourselves into a new way of thinking living producing and consuming thank you very much for your time really appreciate uh, these insights and kavya i think it must talk about the joint venture they're going to sign up together and get a premium out of that thank you thank you very much thank you